Hi, everyone. This is 30 Minutes to Success Inspirational Tuesday Talk. My name is Jackie Wright, and we're about to go live on Facebook uh, for this discussion today. I just want to thank everybody who stops through either through this live broadcast on uh, Facebook or this recording that will be placed on YouTube. We welcome you and thank you for joining us for 30 Minutes to Success Inspirational Tuesday Talk. And so today uh, we are going to be talking about um, getting through five uh, books of the Bible. Can you imagine getting through five books of the Bible in about um, 30 minutes? Well, we're going to do that today. I do believe it. at least you'll know what those five books of the Bible are. They are all one chapter. So with them being one chapter, we should be able to get through. I just want to let the people that are looking through um, uh, Facebook that you can look in the description box and all the scriptures will be there. And uh, if you don't have time to um, go over it now, you know, go over it at some other point of time. Uh, that would be good because I think the five uh, chapters uh, or rather five books that are only one chapter will be a blessing to you. And uh, I'll tell you, it's really interesting. I, I came across this idea of going over the chapters or rather the books in the Bible uh, that were one chapter. And I was really got the impetus uh, from that by looking at uh, Titus, uh, which has about three chapters, if I remember correctly. And I, I thought, oh, what about the one chapter ones? Because I love the book of Jude. I don't know if you've had a chance to see uh, or read the book of Jude. Hey, Jude, I love it. And that is the, the last book before Revelation, which is the last book of the Bible. So I guess it would be the next to the last book of the Bible. Uh, I love Jude. So we're going to uh, be going over over that as well. So Let's get right into it, and I'm going to bring up the screen for those that are, will be looking at this through uh, YouTube, and uh, if there's anyone that's going to be joining us, uh, which we have on occasion uh, through Zoom, you can see it here that is right now, and of course, today is Tuesday, September 10th. Can you believe it already? <laughs> this this year is almost gone, y'all, so whatever you're planning to do, get with it, I would say. Okay, uh, our key scriptures for the day, and we usually have one, but since we're going over five chapters, let's just go ahead and get the particular one that I've chosen for from each book. In the book of Obadiah, it says, you should not gloat over your brother in the day of his misfortune, nor rejoice over the people of Judah in the day of their destruction, nor boast so much in the day of their trouble. Philemon 1, 15 through 16, it says, perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but better than a slave, as a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but ever dearer to you, both as a fellow man and as a brother in the Lord. So, this was about Onesimus. Um, he was a runaway slave and uh, was in um, in um, Paul's um, help. He he went to help Paul and everything uh, wound up helping Paul. And he was trying to put him together with Philemon once again. So that's, that's kind of interesting. And I just think it just clarifies a lot of things that, you know, sla slavery is not something that is like, ordained or should be, but that there should be freedom uh, because he talks about the fact that oh, oh, Onesimus uh, was Philemon's fellow man and a brother in the Lord. So in the Lord Jesus Christ, there is freedom. And uh, that's what the Bible is all about uh, for us to, to run free, to run free in the blessings of God and not to be uh, pulled down and held hostage uh, by the snares that uh, Satan always puts out for us, okay? Going on to 2 uh, John 1, 8 and 9. Uh, watch out that you do not lose what we have, 
what we have worked for, but that you may be rewarded fully. Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teachings of Christ does not have God. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. And in John 3, uh, rather 3 John 1 and 11, it says, Dear friend, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. Anyone who does what is good is from God. Anyone who does what is evil it has not seen God. And in Jude uh, 1, the last verses of this one chapter book, it says in 24 and 25, now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. That's one of my favorite scriptures. In one version, it says, he who is able to keep you from falling. But in this case, it's uh, the New International Version that says, keep you from stumbling. So we praise God for that. So those are the five scriptures um, that are from the five books that have only one chapter. And we're going over Obadiah, Philemon, 2 John, 3 John, and Jude. Those are the books and everything. And so if you're ever looking for a quick Bible study, there you have it, just one page. <laughs> and you can get through uh, an entire book of the Bible and everything. Our bonus scripture, we always bring up every um, week, and that is Psalm twenty-two, twenty-four, 24, for he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, nor has he hidden his face from him. But when he cried to him, he heard. So there you have it. Um, I have it up there every week because so many times when you hear uh, people speaking about um, uh, the glory of God, thinking, uh, speaking about how what God is desiring us of us in terms of obedience, speaking about how God wants us to live uh, in the blessings as opposed to the curses. And it gets kind of overwhelming because people start this comparative analysis sometimes and it's like, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not quite there. You know, we can't be good enough. That is why Jesus came. Um, the law could not save us because we couldn't do all of the 10 commandments. We are not saved by that, but we're saved by trust and belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. And in this particular of uh, um, scripture, Psalm 22, is actually a picture of what Jesus went through on the cross. And one of the things it says, you know, because he did not uh, despise nor abhor the affliction of the afflicted. And as Jesus was on that cross, he was marred. He was marred beyond um, anything anybody could recognize and just the uh, the weight of the sin of the world past present and future that was on him he was quite disfigured and God who had never seen uh, his child his only begotten son in that condition he did not turn away from him you know and that's what it says he has not uh, abhorred the affliction of the afflicted nor has he hidden his face for from him but when he cried to him he heard and that's for us too because the bible says that the uh scriptures are given to us for examples of how to live and what to do and so as jesus cried out you know you know to god uh you know why have you forsaken me he even felt that abandonment many times how much more do we feel that abandonment but no this verse confirms that God hears you. So don't go around uh, beating yourself up in some corner someplace thinking that you've done uh, the, the unpardonable sin when you have a father that you can uh, turn to and help you. PowerPoint set, we are going to go over every week. We always bring out the fact that who is the creator? Jesus is the creator. If you have any questions about it, you can just look at John 1 and 3, Colossians 1 and 16, Hebrews 1 and 2. And also uh, 1 Corinthians 15 uh, talks about the fact that the hierarchy 
uh, that is going to, that is, you know, God, the father is imminent, preeminent, all in all, and the Lord Jesus Christ with him. And it says that uh, he's going, Jesus is going to put everything under the feet of God, the father. And so that kind of shows you a picture there. And I just thank God for the Holy Spirit too, that helps us know and recognize um, uh, God at work and helps us to be um, the disciples we're supposed to be God on earth. And so after going over these five chapters, I hope what you will get out of this is that God warns us not to abuse our fellows, not to abuse our fellow human beings. And God instructs us to love one another. And God warns us to be vigilant, to be pay attention to what's going on around you and everything. So I have some resources for you uh, that you can take a look at. You can click right on there and you can see people that are truly scholars <laughs> that can tell you um, <clears throat> what the meanings of uh, significance of these books are. Uh, as I have mentioned before, I'm not a biblical scholar or anything, but I do love the word of God. And I like sharing with people what he says to me. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and uh, go over the scriptures. And the first book is the book of Obadiah. And basically that book is uh, a book that is judgment on um, Edom, um, who are descendants of Esau, who basically did not stand by uh, Israel. Uh, in their day of trouble. And that's um, what the Bible, the Bible talks about. So uh, the verse that I, I, I chose is, you should not gloat over your brother in the day of his misfortune, nor rejoice over the people of Judah in the day of their destruction, nor boast so much in the day of their trouble. And of course, you know, uh, God's people are always uh, God's people. So, you know, that Advice is advice that we can uh, definitely look at at today as well. So I just want to encourage you to uh, to look at that. And so we're going to bring up um, what it says is uh, Obadiah's. I like that name, Obadiah. I don't know if it would be wise to name a child Obadiah, uh, given the way uh, kids carry on in uh, in the playground, but uh, it does have a great, great sound to it. And I love it. And it is, uh, it means worshiper of Yahweh. So it has a very wonderful meaning as well. And as we get into Obadiah's vision, the first verse, the vision of Obadiah, this is what the sovereign Lord says about Edom. We have heard a message from the Lord. An envoy that was sent to the nations to say, rise, let us go against her for battle. See, I will make you small among the nations. You will be utterly despised. The pride of your heart has deceived you. You who live in the clefts of the rocks and make your home in the heights and who um, say to yourself, who can bring me down to the ground? Though you soar like the eagle and make your nest, <clears throat> nest among the stars, from there I will bring you down, declares the Lord. If thieves came to you, if robbers in the night, oh, what a disaster awaits you. Would they not steal only as much as they wanted? If grape pickers came to you, would they not leave a few grapes? But how Esau will be ransacked. Ooh, his hidden treasures pillaged. pillaged. All your allies will force you to the border. Your friends will deceive you and overpower you. Those who eat your bread will set a trap for you, but you will not detect it. Wow, wow. In plain sight, deception before you in plain sight, but because the judgment of God is on you, you don't even recognize. In that day, declares the Lord, will I not destroy the wise men of Edom, those of understanding in the mountains of Esau, your warriors, Timon, will be terrified, and everyone in Esau's mountains will be cut down in the slaughter. Because of the violence against your brother, giving a reason, because of the violence against your brother, 
Jacob, you will be covered with shame. You will be destroyed forever. On that day, you stood aloof while strangers carried off his wealth and foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem. You were like one of them. You should not gloat over your brother in the day of his misfortune, nor rejoice over the people of Judah in the day of their destruction, nor boast so much in the day of their trouble. You should not march through the gates of my people in the day of their disaster, nor gloat over them in their calamity in the day of their disaster, nor seize their wealth in the day of their disaster. You should not wait at the crossroads to cut down their fugitives, nor hand over their survivors in the day of their trouble. The day of the Lord is near for all nations. As you have done, it will be done to you. Your deeds will return upon your own head. Just as you drank on my holy hill, so all the nations will drink continually. They will drink and drink and be as if they had never been. But on Mount Zion will be deliverance. It will be holy. And Jacob was <clears throat> will possess his inheritance. Jacob will be a fire and Joseph a flame. Esau will stumble, will be stubble, and they will set him on fire and destroy him. There will be no survivors from Esau, the Lord has spoken. People of Negev will occupy the mountains of Esau, and people from the foothills will possess the land of the Philistines. They will occupy the fields of Ephraim and Samaria, and Benjamin will possess Gilead. This company of Israelite exiles who are in Canaan will possess the land as far as Seraphat. The exiles from Jerusalem who are in Shepharad will possess the towns of Negev. Deliverers will come up out of Mount Zion to govern the mountains of Esau and the kingdom will be the Lord's. Wow. That is very powerful. I I don't know about you, but there were just certain things that uh, jumped out at me in terms of, you know, relationships. Uh, basically what um, was said, what you've done, what you've done to others will come on your head, you know. So if you've done something negative, negative will come. And if you've done something positive, of course, positive will come. But really, I think what I thought about what in modern times, um, that I thought about was in verse uh, 13 that said, you know, that you should not march through the gates of my people in the day of their disaster, nor gloat over them in their calamity in the day of their disaster, nor seize their wealth in the day of their disaster. And that made me think about that to this day, there are still some efforts to retrieve some of the riches uh, that were stolen from the Jewish people uh, in Europe uh, after uh, the Nazi um, regime fell. And that, you know, there's something uh, spiritual about the fact that, you know, people think they're getting away with things, but they're not. And that God causes people to be accountable. And just like now, there's that accountability where, uh, there have been cases, and hopefully there'll be more uh, for the ones that are in uh, the various courts, that the people's um, finances that were stolen from them will be restored to them. Now, I was just talking about the Jewish Jewish people, and then uh, the Lord put on my heart, oh, look, uh, yeah, and what about what's been stolen from uh, the slaves of the United States of America and in the Mer Americas where there were these companies and different ones that made a lot of money uh, off of the slaves and never did pay them at all. And so God is a, is an eternal God and he calls for accountability. And, you know, uh, you're going to be paying one way or the other. So you might as well fess up and uh, do what you need to do and uh, 
repay people what you have uh, stolen from them, you know, that that is something that uh, is not righteous. And I think that's why some of the problems that we are facing in um, the United States of America is because we've never really owned up to the fact that um, the land was stolen, um, that uh, people were imported from Africa to work the stolen land, and a lot of people got enriched and, you know, and they go on like, oh, nothing happened. Like, uh, you know, what does slavery have to do with today? It has to do with the fact that you've been enriched and uh, you have not done right uh, by the people that you should have done right by and everything. And like, you know, if we would, what was that, that scripture that says that we, if we would humble ourselves, um, you know, before God, he would heal our land. And there needs to be healing. And a lot of the reason that we don't have healing is because we don't really talk about the fact that we there's a wound, there's something very wrong and everything. So, you know, especially, uh, you know, people that are, are saying they're in evangelicals and yet they um, are not walking in alignment with the word of God and you know the righteousness uh, it's like the year of jubilee belongs to everybody else except for the black people in uh, the united states of america so it's like something needs to be done about that but let's go on to another book here we're going to talk uh go straight into philemon i don't know if i'll be able to go over every uh verse in all of these given our time but we're going to get through this as much as possible Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and fellow worker, also to Apiphia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the a church that meets in your house, grace and peace to you, from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, thanksgiving and prayer. I always thank God, my God, as I remember you in my prayers, because I hear about your love for all his holy people and your faith in the Lord Jesus. I pray that your partnership with us in faith may be effective in deepening your understanding of every good thing we share for the sake of Christ. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. Wow. Paul's plea for Onesimus. Therefore, although in Christ I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do, yet I prefer to appeal to you on the basis of love. It is as none other than Paul, an old man and now also a prisoner of Christ, that I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who became my son while I was in change, chains. Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and to me. I'm sending him, who is my very heart, back to you. I would have liked to keep him with me so that he could take your place in helping me while I am in chains for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent so that any favor you do would not seem forced, but would be voluntary. Perhaps the reason he <clears throat> was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back forever no longer as a slave, but better than a slave, as a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but even dearer to you, both as a fellow man and a brother in Christ, not as a slave. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has done you any wrong or owes you anything, charge it to me. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hands. I will pay it back. Not to mention that you owe me your very self. I do not, I do wish, brother, that 
I may have some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I write to you, knowing that you will do even more than I ask. And one thing more, prepare a guest room for me because I hope to be restored to you in answer to your prayers. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ, sends his greeting. And also do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, my fellow workers, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, with your spirit. This is very powerful, you know, um, the fact of Paul seeking uh, Philemon to, like, let bygones be bygones of this runaway slave and to have a newness of life the fact that this man is now your brother. And ultimately, that's what Christ uh, does. He makes all of us brothers and sisters uh, to be a part of the family of God. So that is a, a very powerful, powerful scripture and everything. So it's something to look over, you know, this whole theme about, you know, God doesn't want us to abuse each other is one of the power points um, that I had mentioned. And then also, um, you know, the fact that we should love one another. And this is an example of love where uh, Paul is actually beseeching um, Philemon to say, hey, um, love, love. So um, we've got those additional scriptures that we need to go over and we've got only about four minutes. We're not gonna get through everything, but it is there for you. Um, to go over these scriptures and everything. So I just uh, want to encourage you uh, to do that and to go over the scriptures yourself and see. But let's just uh, bring up the scriptures, the main scriptures that I have for uh, the remaining. And I do think I'm going to take the time to close with Jude because it is very powerful and it's something that I think we should not ignore. And I think that's one of the things about each of these books that I I really love is that they are explosive. Uh, they have uh, great um, information just all packed into, into one, you know, showing um, God's uh, love, showing God's judgment, showing how we should uh, love one another and everything. So let's just go over these others uh, other books uh, that are of the five, uh, Second John 1 and verses 8 through 9, it says, watch out that you do not lose what we have worked for, but that you may be rewarded fully. Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teachings of Christ does not have God. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. So we're warned right that there to be vigilant. Don't lose what we have. And third, John, one where it says, dear friends, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. Anyone who does what is good from God, anyone who does what is from God, rather, anyone who does evil is has not seen God. So you have some very powerful messages that are in these books, you know, of sharing how we should, um, treat one another and act. And then I'm going to start from the very beginning, but I do want to just uh, announce this, the I, I guess the pinnacle, the exclamation point of June. And that is now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God, our savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forevermore so there we have that right there you know ultimately uh, god is sovereign and everything uh belongs to to him and uh you know we need to pay attention to what the bible says and be very diligent and vigilant uh, about what's going on and no matter how interesting or alluring uh, the world is we actually need to take a look at 
what thus saith the Lord. And with that, we're going to go over, going a little bit over, but we are going to go and read Jude 1 because there are a lot of powerful um, statements in here, just like a lot of great multivitamins in here. And yes, yes, yes. Let's get that right now. Still on Philemon here. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James, to those who have been called, who are loved in God and the, the Father and kept for Jesus Christ. Now that, that applies to us too. Mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. Yes. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith. Contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you they are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ as our sovereign and Lord. Mm. So it just goes to show you everything's not right in the church. So be vigilant. Though you already know all this, I want to remind you that the Lord at one time delivered his people out of Egypt but later destroyed those who did not believe and the angels who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their proper dwelling. These he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on that great day. So that's one of those, the third of those angels that uh, followed behind Satan that you've read about elsewhere. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns, usually you don't talk about that in, um, in conventional wisdom when people bring up Sodom and Gomorrah, but there were additional towns that were destroyed. And it says they gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They serve as an example to those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. God gives us choices, blessings or curses, as it says in Deuteronomy, we choose. God's not making anybody do anything. And that's one of the reasons I hate witchcraft so much, because witchcraft is uh, controlling and rebellious and basically spirit of rebellion. And it's going to make somebody do something, make something, you know, with this certain potion or st stuff like that. And that kind of control is not anything that even God gives. He gives us choice. We are free. Uh, we have free reign to choose what we're going to do. You know, we know the consequences of following him. We know the consequences of not following him. It's very plain, not only in the Bible, but everyday life. When you see what happens when you uh, go for the good and you go for the bad. So, you know, this book of Jude is so powerful in so many ways, you know, and it talks, you know, just gives us a, you know, powerful inclination of what we're dealing with, where, you know, we got angels that were cast out of heaven that are trying to influence things along with Satan, who is the prince of the power of the air, as it says in the Bible. And so that's why we probably should be very careful about what we're uh, consuming as far as airwaves and what's going on over the internet. And um, let's evaluate what's good what's godly and what is evil and everything and then dealing with the subtleness of deception is something that we uh have to say on our knees before god with because we um, don't want to be tricked by the devil but jackie let's go ahead and continue to see what exactly the word says in verse eight in the very same way on the strength of their dreams quote unquote uh, these ungodly people pollute their own bodies, reject authority, and heap abuse on celestial beings. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about uh, the body of Moses, excuse me, did not himself dare to condemn him. 
for slander, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Yet these people slander whatever they do not understand and the very things they do understand by instinct as irrational uh, animals do will destroy them. So woe to them. They have been taken. Uh, they have taken the way of Cain. They have rushed for profit money into Balaam's error. They have destroyed, have been destroyed in chorus rebellion. Oh, that whole thing of not money, but the love of money that has destroyed so many lives uh, comes forth to me in um, verse 11. These people are blemishes at your feast. They hang out with you. They're, you know, elbowing, next, elbowing you. They're right next to you, eating with you without the slightest qualm. Shepherds who feed only themselves. They are clouds without rain blown along by the wind, autumn trees without fruit and uprooted twice dead. They are wild waves of sea foaming up their shame, wandering stars for whom blackest darkness has been reserved forever. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about them. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and to convict all of them of all the ungodly acts they have committed in their ungodliness and of all the defiant words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These people are grumblers and fault finders. They follow their own evil desires. They boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. Very deep. We could go uh, go deep into that with uh, you know the political aspect of what's happening around the world as people are choosing leadership around the world. A number of more than um, half of the nations with the most populations right now are choosing uh, leadership. And are they choosing leadership in alignment with God and righteousness and what would be good for people? Or are they choosing people that um, are just like those sheep that um that are those wolves in sheep clothing that only feed themselves okay but we're called to persevere but dear friends remember that the apostles of our lord jesus christ foretold they said to you in the last days there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires these are the people who divide you who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit but you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Be merciful to those who doubt. Save others by snatching them from the fire. To others show mercy mixed with fear hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh and ultimately to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior who alone is wise with glory and majesty, power and dominion both now and forevermore. I am quoting another version, but let me just see what it says right here in the NIV. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. I love that now and forevermore. There is forevermore with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is a glorious transformation of our spirit, body, and soul to be with God forever. And there is a forevermore separated from God. And um, the description of what that place is like, you know what the word says. Get in there, read for yourself. What are you going to choose? Blessings? Or are you going to choose the curses? Are you going to choose the blessings 
are you going to choose the curses? That is up to each and every one. And that's why we always have listed uh, the most powerful scripture, I think one of the most, if not the most, is John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. He who believes is saved. He who believes not is condemned already, as it says in the following uh, verse 17. So we're going to end with a prayer today. Father, we just uh, come before you, those that uh, come across this. We just pray for an awakening to the truth for those who do not know you. And for those who do know you, for you to draw even closer to them and they draw closer to you. Father, as we are obviously in the end times, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you bless each and every one of us who are tuned in and our family and those that are associated with us. And we pray even for our enemies. Father, because your word says you would not have anyone lost. And we just give you the glory and we give you the praise and we give you the honor. And we pray that you do what you would with this time that we've gone over five chapters or rather five books in the Bible that only have one chapter. And Jude ends with amen, which means let it be so. And Father God, no matter how we feel, whatever we think, um, the lack of knowledge we have, you are sovereign and you are merciful. And we depend on that. Cause us to be successful in spirit. Cause us to prosper here on the earth while we're here, even as things are falling apart. But you've got it all together for us. In Jesus' name, to you be the glory. To you be the honor. To you be the praise. To you be the glory. To you be the dominion. To you be the authority. It all belongs to you. And we just thank you for your goodness, your love, and your mercy to us and your peace. And it is in the matchless name of your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, we are praying, seeking you, Lord. Amen. All right. Thank you for another time with 30 Minutes to Success inspirational truths to talk we went about 12 minutes over but i think it's worth it blessings to you god bless us one and all and once again thank you for being with me here at 30 minutes to success inspirational truths to talk because if you give god 30 minutes or even a minute a day your road to success is going to be that much more successful and powerful in jesus name to you, oh God, be the glory. And thank you for sharing your glory with your people.